Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all give God some praise. <laughs> See, one thing about a free church, you can roll back. You can rewind. Hallelujah. So we thank God for all of you that are here today. And God's got a word for you that's going to shift your life, that's going to bring forth manifestation, that if you hold on to these three scriptures and chew on them and let them develop in you something that God is going to do out of you, then people will see the glorious works of God. That is John 1, 1 through 13. John 14, 25 through 26. And Ephesians 2, 4 through 7. John 1, 1 through 13, and I'm probably going to read 1 to 4 and then skip to 14, but I want you to read all of it in your um, devotional time this week. John 14, 25 through 26, Ephesians 2, 4 through 7. Amen. Father, we just worship you. We just glorify you. We just exalt you. Father, we come before you right now, God, to sup at your table, to sit with you, Lord God. You said you have prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemy, and you have anointed our head, O oh God, with oil, that our cup will run over with revelation and knowledge, God, that we will know that surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives, and we will be able to dwell in the house in the presence of the Lord forever. So, Father, I just thank you for this word that we are positioned for purpose to shine. We are positioned for purpose to shine. As that will be a topic for the word, it will be position for purpose to shine. As we enter into this Thanksgiving and Christmas season, we must know as kingdom of God citizens that God said we have been positioned for purpose to shine. In these three scriptures that I gave you earlier, I will read them. John 1, 1 through 13 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. That's where God starts stirring me up with this word. When um, Bishop preached that awesome celebration of our home going of our sister Tuesday. And when he said that, God jumped in my belly. He said, it's time for the light to shine. And I thought, okay, Lord. Verse 5. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light. You got to know that. He was not that light. But was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. And that's a sad place to be. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believeth on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, Father, full of grace and truth. And what God said to me when he dropped that in, and he gave me these three scriptures, he said, Jesus was the written word in heaven spoken into a time that he would redeem back sinful mankind and he said and when Jesus ascended he sent back the comforter which we're going to read in um, John 14 25 through 26 he said these things have I spoken unto you being yet present with you but the comforter which is the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name I'm going to send back the comforter so you can manifest the word 
Because you have been sent into a time to bring forth a light to all mankind. The Holy Spirit is the most powerful weapon that we have because he's the very present or the very person of God inside of us. That we can decree what heaven says about us in the earth realm and see manifestation. If God spoke into, into the earth realm a word and Jesus became flesh. Because he spoke that word in eternity. And Jesus manifested that word and became flesh. When he spoke you into a time, he spoke you to become a walking, living word of heaven. Now, you got to grasp that. Because we're in this hour that we're going to become the life and the light to men. I talk to people all the time. And, and, and you know, one time I was kind of complaining because I was like, why do all these people keep calling me? Don't they have pastors? And they go to churches, and we want to tell them, well, you need to call your pastor. And God said, but no, you are the light that's going to ignite the life that's in them. It's not about where they are. It's who they are. And I've called you to ignite them. Ephesians 2, 4, and 7. I want you to read this as I read it. Because this is something you got to know in your spirit. This is a word that when he was, was given the time of celebration and he was preaching this word and I was sitting there, God said, if you only knew, if you only knew why I sent you. Ephesians 2, 4 through 7. Say, so even when we were dead in sin, has quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, we have been quickened that he can raise us up together and make us sit together in heavenly places. That's the key. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the age to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. And I'm going to make a statement, and I want you to think about it. We are seated in heavenly places to bring forth in the earth life, and the light was the light of men. We are seated in heavenly places. Where are you positioned? You got to know your position in this hour. If you don't know, once you are born again and you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, your spirit was positioned in heaven. Your spirit is no more dead. And God said that you have been seated in heavenly places to bring forth in the earth life. He said, I come to give you life and that more abundantly in John 10, 10. He said, but you have been seated to bring forth life, and the life was the light of men. It's what he said in John about Jesus. I'm going to send you to go and bring forth life, that it be the light to men. Our life should be a light to men, to point them in the direction that God has for their life. And, of course, God brings me always back to Isaiah 61 and 3 is one of my foundation scriptures. And whenever he says, arise and shine, I know he's getting ready to do something. Whatever foundation scripture he has given you, when that scripture drops in your spirit, he's ready to move in that place. Arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon me. That's how I read it. it says upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Now, we're in a dark time. And I don't want to get into no details. But Brother Eric and I dealt with a situation, and, and, and I'm going to say this to Eric. You got to hear it in the right spirit. When Eric called me, he said, oh, no, don't, don't call. I said, the Holy Spirit say call, God getting ready to do something because the light getting ready to come on because we're in a dark time. And I'm telling you, we are losing a lot 
of our authority that God has given us because we don't position ourselves from the heavenlies to speak into a situation and see God change it. And when I heard that, when Er, when Er called me about this situation, and I knew it was true what he was talking about, but my thing was the church is supposed to reach out and help. And I'm going to reach out and help the mother because the mother needs to have answers now. And if the church ain't got the answers, where do they go? And so when I made the call, I said, this is what the Lord said we're going to do. And she said, I never did that before. I say, God say do it, and it's going to protect you. Because we should have answers. And if you're seated in heavenly places, when you get a call like that, God will give you an answer. What to do. And everything turned out. And, and, and it's not over. But one thing I do know, what the adversary was setting up to do, he didn't get a chance to do it. Because I knew what he, as soon as I got the call, God said, that's what's getting ready to happen, nullify it. And I said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's not going to happen. And I made calls to other people that was involved and told them, the church is watching this. Make sure it go down right. Because they ain't use us petitioning after it doesn't happen. Let them know we're watching. And we have authority to watch. Not saying we're going to cover up sin, but we're going to position ourselves that we have a voice. And the person I talked to, he said, oh, yeah, getting a call from you, I'm glad to know you're involved. Because we respect that church up there. Give God a hand clap of praise. Whenever we worship, pray, preach, or engage in any activity of God's kingdom, it is so God's authority can rule and establish his plan and purpose in it. Whenever we come in here and worship God, just don't come and say, I'm just singing another song that makes me feel good. And I'm worshiping God so his authority can come into my situation and he can establish his purpose. Because I'm seated in heavenly places. I am worshiping from a place where I have all authority to decree over my life that what God says will be. I am the head and not the tail. I don't care if if I don't have but two pennies as they say to rub together. I'm rich and highly favored. And if I get in worship and decree that, for my position changes my steps and orders them into my prosperity. God said, whenever you pray, know that my authority is being established in your heart that you can be positioned to have a word in the time of need in this nation it is time we position, church. This nation is making all kind of crazy rules against the word of God. We got to pray. God said, I wrote, amen. I like it. Hallelujah. Got me an amen calling over there. Our role is to manifest his glory in such a way that it displaces all darkness with light. Everything around us should be affected by the kingdom of God's glory. When we make a call, they used to say, oh, yeah, we know y'all serious up there. Now, how many of y'all know that they were saying that about dominion? And, and, and then they say, so we'll call you when we make our move. I said, yeah, I suggest you do. Mm-hmm. And they did. Hallelujah. Give God a hand clap. Because it ain't nothing but God's glory. It's, it's, it's nothing about us personally. It's about God's glory. God said, if you lose sight of your purpose, of manifesting what I have already ordained for your life, you will drift in this life purposeless and miss out on everything I ordained for you. Amen. I tell you, that little brother is hearing in the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. He's hearing. Whose other child that is, I do want to pray over that child at the end of the service because he's hearing. But thus saith the Lord. 
Every born again believer is the temple of God and the dwelling place of his spirit sent to the earth to affect that atmosphere. 1 Corinthians 3.16. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I worship you, God. I magnify you. I glorify you. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the great I am. You are our Lord and our shepherd. And we shall not want nothing, God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Because you have prepared a table. God said, I want them to know there's a table being prepared right now in the presence of your enemy. If you remain seated in this position, you're going to shine and your situation going to shine because the enemy of your soul will be backed up. First Corinthians 3.16. Know ye not that ye are, ye are the temples which God told me the reservoir of God. And that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Know ye not. That's a scripture you might want to just put on a card somewhere and post it. Yes, I'm a reservoir of his Spirit. Know ye not that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6 and 12. Because if the Spirit of God dwells in you, God has a plan for you. And the plan is Ephesians 6 and 12. Because opposition is going to come to hinder what God has for us. But God said, I want you to remember this. You are seated in heavenly places and you're wrestling not against flesh and blood. Those situations that's coming up against us, they're not flesh and blood as we perceive. They may talk and walk and look like us, but that war is not flesh and blood. He said, for we wrestle not in Ephesians 6 and 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's why you got to get up in the high place and remain seated where it's under your feet and not on your head. Daniel 7, 25, and he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. That's what's been going on for years. God gave me a glimpse when I first got saved, and I was saying, why are the saints so bitter? I thought salvation which it is, was the most exciting thing that ever happened to me. I was delivered from this. I was set free from that. And then I, was, I could walk and talk in areas that would have gotten me killed. But I'm telling them, y'all need Jesus. Because I had a boldness for the Lord. But the saints were looking all. And God said, this is the reason why. Because there is an enemy that speaks great words against the Most High and words out the saints. But there's good news, church. For he who was born of God overcome the world, possessing and inheriting the promises. That's in 1 John 5 and 4. You have overcame this world if you remain seated from the position that you see from God's place. God said daily you will have opportunities to affect your atmosphere. Remember that. You're going to have an opportunity because the enemy of your soul is going to come to bring you down and to worry you and to try to get you out of position. But God said, remember the good news. You are an overcomer because God has given us his spirit to decree what is written in his word as a decree. Let it be. If we're going to be the life and the light unto men, we got to start decreeing like God did. Let it be. Let it be unto me according to your word. This is the basic foundation for living. 
that you got to decree every day. Romans 14 and 17. You decree that over your life. For the kingdom of God is not meat or drink. It's nothing in this earth realm. But righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. God said it's time to seek and to study the life of the Holy Spirit. He lives in you, but you don't understand him because you don't study. You don't get into this word and see how the Holy Spirit and this word works together. If you don't do that, you won't be an overcomer. Sin will overcome you. Hebrews 8 and 10 said, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law into their minds and write them into their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they will be to me a people. I will put my law. The Holy Spirit is in you to put his word in you. That you can decree, let it be according to his word. And when his word manifests, then you'll see how it will be. Whenever God said, let it be, it was so. When you say, let it be, it will be so. God said, start walking and talking and living consistently in the word of God. This is very important as a factor for your Holy Ghost walk. James 3, 3 and 4. This is the season. That tsunami that took place in the natural is what's going on in the supernatural. As it is in the natural, so it is in the supernatural. But say, I have been positioned for purpose to shine. I don't care what come or go. I have been positioned for purpose to shine. Because James 3, 3 and 4 said, Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. But also the ship, which though they be so great, the storms, that they going to hit this earth. Stuff is going to happen. And it's going to be great. And are driven of furious winds. Yet are they turned about with a very small rudder. Whithsoever the governor listens. The adversary of our soul will send situations. And God said that I allowed. To let you know if you being tossed to and fro. Or if you're being anchored by the word of God. Uh, is the word keeping you anchored? Or are you being tossed to and fro? God says, I've given you a divine focus that will stir you like a rudder in the time of trouble. That will keep you consistently living in my presence. That no matter what's going on. Get into my presence. There's answers. I have prepared a table before you. If there's if the adversary is throwing sickness, there's healing on the table. Partake of healing. I'm giving you what you need. If there's a bill, and God knows I have two things before him right now. And I'm saying, God, I need a miracle. I need to see a miracle. In these two things. And God said, just don't let your mouth say opposite. Let your mouth say what I say. Surely goodness and mercy go follow me all the days of my life. My children dwells in the house of the Lord forever. My kids are favored. And they are blessed to be a blessing. I have a promise. And I have an inheritance that my children walks in now. In the name of Jesus. What you say about your situation determines how you're going to go. During this season, and I thought that was when Bishop said, what season is it? I thought, okay, he done read my notes. During the season, or any season that we're going through, 
but definitely during this holiday season. Thanksgiving. Oh, I thank God. Let's give God a praise for our family Thanksgiving service. That was nice. Just to stop and give God some thanks. And you know what was happening? Those that didn't, they were saying it to themselves. I could just see thanks just going on in the spirit. Because we got so much to be thankful for. And God said, but during this season, it's very important that you keep your integrity in what you do. Because the table prepared for you, the enemy is watching your integrity. What are you going to say about it? What are you going to do about it? You got to run this race in 1 Corinthians. Know ye not that you must run this race and receive that prize. And every situation you come to, that God allows, is getting you closer to the manifestation of what he said about you. Because that's what shapes and molds you. We are seated in heavenly places where the thrones are. That's in Romans 4, 2, and 3. It talks about um, immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne. throne was set in heaven and once set on the throne and God said you are sitting as well on the throne I've sit you on the throne that you may represent my authority and power in this earth realm it's from that position we can operate in Matthew 6 33 do anybody know what that is seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness And then pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is time we call heaven manifestation into our situations. Heaven manifestations. And God said, when you pray that the kingdom of God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven, you have just decreed his authority and his dominion and his power manifest. Then his throne will be established and invade earth. Make time for God daily. Get before God and worship him. It is time we become single-eyed, which is focused. You cannot be tossed to and fro no more. The winds are blowing. They're blowing to get you out of position. Become single-eyed. Become single-focused. For God I live. And for God, I will die to my will of the me, the my, and the I. When a situation comes, your flesh is going to tell you, do this, do that. I start saying some things. My, for my flesh talk loud. What about you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> my flesh will have me, my head spinning like the exorcist girl. And by the time it's spinning like that, I done thought about four things I could do to destroy something. Uh Uh-huh. And the Spirit of God is saying, peace, be still. Stand and watch the salvation of the Lord. And I'm going, "Mm mm-hmm, yeah, okay, mm mm-hmm. Because God don't talk loud. If it's saying loud, God told me this a long time ago. He said, anything keeps saying do, do, and it's sounding loud, It's the driving spirit, and it's the devil. He's driving you into a dead end. But I speak softly and say, come and pray. Come and sup with me. Get still before me. So I can show you what you're getting ready to do. You're going to hurt yourself too. Hallelujah. Discover and discern his voice. Follow his commandments. Live a life to the fullest in his presence. God said, I've called us to to soar into the place of freedom where nothing can hold you down. That's the place we all want to get to. In freedom where nothing can hold us down. The place where no matter what comes, God got a word for it. Because, listen to this. 
He said, everything coming is also in the word. Why don't you go in and find out what to do about it? He said, I told you there'll be earthquakes. There'll be storms. There'll be tsunamis. But I say, look up. To the hills where your redeemer draw nigh. He coming with a plan and a purpose for you to shine. When God takes over our thought life, it settles in us as well. As we embrace the Holy Spirit, which is a paradigm shift. I went into a meeting in Danville the other day, and when I walked in there, God said, shift, 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 shift. And so it was a beautiful house, and everybody walk around looking at the rooms, and I'm like, God, you want me to look at the rooms? He said, no, just call shift, shift in here, shift, shift. He said, because I got to shift our mindset. Because if you want to see heaven on earth, you got to see it from heaven to earth. You, we so busy trying to bring God down to us, God is trying to bring us up to him. So we can see from that place that what we're going through is little nets. Little fuzzy nets. You know how you see nets and you just do this and keep going? You don't go running after the net to hit it. You know, it's a net, you go like that, and if it lands, you pop it. But you just kind of move, you know, you do like that, especially if you're driving, because you'll wreck your car. You just kind of do like that, or roll your window down, let the net go out. God said, but when a situation comes, that's the way, if you're in heaven, you see it as a net. You just roll your window down and say, be gone, and decree what my words say about your destiny. God said Christianity is changing from all about doing to relationship or being. Being equally yoked in a loving relationship between Christ and his bride, the church, where we are positioned to shine. Give God a hand clap of praise. That's our purpose. It's time for us to shine. It's the, and, you know, I, I started putting up my, my Christmas decoration. Whatever day we, was, we didn't have daycare, so I had my tree up since about three weeks ago. But I was so glad to put my lights outside yesterday because God said this is the season that everybody is getting joyful. I mean, even those that are depressed, they can look at a Christmas carol and start singing Christmas carols and feel a little joy. God said, but this is the time you become a light for eternity. Be a light unto men, that men will see your good works and glorify our God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Bishop.